Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Thank you for joining. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Uh, today we're going to do a watercolor painting. As you probably know, you may have seen uh, on the display here on the uh, live feed what we're going to do. Uh, as you also may notice, this is a very complicated looking uh, painting. Um, and uh, it's going to challenge me for sure because I have uh, have a lot of detail in this painting. And uh, as you can see from the sketch that's up there that uh, uh, we've got a lot, lot of work to do today, so I don't know if I'll get to do two paintings today, but I may do a, uh, a second, uh, just a little uh, follow-up, sort of a little tutorial on uh, looking at value maps, not value maps, but ma value plans. Uh, and I want to show you that in just a second, uh, but I'm going to show you s some painting in that uh, later. But uh, today, this is a scene from Venice, <clears throat> and uh, it's another one of my photos that I've received from uh, Photos for Artists, which is a... a Facebook website, and uh, this is from a, a photographer named Helga Ort, and uh, she had several photographs out there from Venice and different Venice canals. I kind of like this one the best, primarily because it had some nice value change in it, and uh, I could see the, the darks coming out. When I squinted my eyes, I could see the, the dark shapes forming, and so uh, we're going to try to do that. You see I have at the top of my easel the photograph here. I have my value map, which I've talked to you about before. I always have that up there, and you can see this nice dark shape in the middle here with some uh, medium value shapes around it with some light shapes uh, there. And then also, because it's uh, fairly complicated, it has a lot of architectural details that I want to try to capture some of. I'm not going to capture all of them, but I also have my sketch up here on top of my easel as well. So before I get uh, any further along, I want to go over to my uh, computer and show you uh, what I've done to create this scene and uh, show you a couple other things that I, I will get to later. Hold on. Okay, here we are at my computer, and uh, you can see my studio here, you can see my easel behind me, and uh, you can see my uh, computer back there in the background that uh, I uh, use to uh, communicate with you when I'm painting and watch for your comments. Um, but before I start with this painting, I want to tell you a couple of things about how to look at paintings and how to uh, uh, try to achieve a value map, uh, which is what I always do. Several people uh, <clears throat> have uh, asked me about value maps, what it is, and uh, how I use it, and how I create it. Um, but this particular uh, picture you're seeing here is um, basically a very simple landscape. It's just a background sky. It has some uh, mountains and trees in the, in the distance and uh, has a dark silhouette foreground. And uh, so you can use this, and I'm going to show you later, if we have time, uh, how to take something that has uh, three grounds in it, a background, a middle ground, and a foreground, and has three values, a light value, a mid value, and a dark value, and how you can get uh, six different types of paintings out of that. So you can take the same painting, same scene, and create uh, as many as six different um, different scenes out of it by changing the background, the middle ground, and the foreground, and by swapping dark value, mid value, and light value. So we have three uh, three grounds, you call if I call it that, and we have three values, and uh, so you can actually get six different scenes, and they all have different uh, uh, emotional appeal, I guess, and so. Uh, later on, after I finish the painting, I'll probably throw up a, a piece of watercolor paper and just show you how I do that and how you can create this sort of uh, patterns for yourself to make you think about what you can do in a, in a, in a landscape. They always don't have to have blue sky, green grass, and, uh, and dark trees in the middle. So uh, we'll talk about that a little more later. So uh, if you hang on with me, I'll get to that uh, when I finish the painting. Um, I want to show you the photograph I started with, with uh, from Helga Ort. This is a full-size original painting, and I had a lot of, a lot of things in the, uh, in, the, in the foreground here, so several boats, and uh, a little more than I wanted. There's enough uh, detail in the architecture with the, the, the uh, different windows and balconies and uh, little things on tops of the roof and all of that that I uh, 
wanted to simplify it a little bit. So I just basically zoomed in, cropped it a little, and uh, so now you have, you see what my cropped version looks like. So I have uh, really only about uh, three or four boats in here instead of five or six. And uh, that's what we will use uh, for our, that's what I use for my sketch. Um, I also have a grid. I put, put my grid over it to make sure it fits 11 by 14. When I cropped it, I should say that I cropped it to make it fit a uh, 11 by 14 uh, size watercolor paper. <clears throat> and uh, that is uh, what I'm painting on today, 11 by, 11 by 14 uh, paper. So this 4 by 5 grid uh, fits that very nicely. And uh, so we'll be uh, painting that size painting today. Um, and I showed you just briefly my value map. I'll show it to you again here. Um, and it has some uh, good darks in the center. It has some uh, nice mid values on the right side in the background. And, uh, and then has some light uh, shapes around it as well. So we're going to see how much fun this is. And you'll see me struggle with this probably because uh, architectural details are always a bit of a challenge. Um, and uh, I, I like to uh, give myself a challenge, as you know. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll uh, make some mistakes and you'll wa be able to watch me uh, try to correct them or try to uh, recover from them. Um, and then I want to show you the sketch. Here's the sketch. Um, this sketch will be on my website when uh, I get uh, the final video edited. As you know, I always edit the video uh, again and take, uh, make a nice high definition version and put it up on YouTube after I finish with the uh, streaming uh, live broadcast. So uh, this sketch will be on my website and you can grab it, pull it down, print it out and uh, use it to uh, do your own version of the painting. I'm sure you haven't had time to make this sketch of your own probably, but uh, that's uh, it's because it's pretty detailed and takes a lot of a little bit of time to do that. So um, without any more here at the computer, I think I'm going to switch back over to my easel. And I'm going to step back over there and uh, we'll get going on this. Um, okay, I'm back here at my easel. And uh, so I want to zoom in on this with my, uh, uh, my uh, video controls here and get it lined up for you so we can have a, a pretty good uh, view of it. I want, to, I want you to be able to see the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to try to get it as squared up as I can. I'm also going to move it uh, to the left so that as I put my overlay my palette camera on this. Um, come on, my controls are working too fast. Um, here's my palette, but I can also put it in the lower right corner like this. So um, I will be uh, showing you that and that's the way we'll be painting. But before I do that, I want to go over my palette with you as I always do. Uh, go over my brushes and uh, tell you that we're using a Sterling Edwards uh, painting palette here. I'm using a set of Sterling Edwards brushes. Uh, these are bristle brushes and uh, medium and small. These are blending brushes, he calls them. Then there's some flats, a couple of flats, a one inch flat, a quarter inch flat. I have three rounds. I have a number 12, a number eight, and number uh, uh, four round. And then I have a number six uh, script liner. So I may not use all those, uh, but I have them available. Uh, and uh, I'll have them uh, at my disposal. Uh, my paints are as you probably know and get tired of hearing me say it, but for new people who are here, I just want to make sure they all know what I'm using. These are My Mary Blue Transparent Italian Watercolors. And uh, they're, they have a little bit different names than some of the traditional colors, but I'll go through them anyway. Uh, this is called Neutral Tint, very much like a Payne's Gray. Here's a blue cyan, primary blue cyan, it's called Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Violet, Crimson Lake, very much like alizarin crimson. Uh, primary red magenta, cadmium red. I have burnt sienna, raw sienna, and yellow ochre for my uh, earth tones. And then I have a uh, cupric green, very similar to the thalo green. I have sap green. I have a couple of yellows here. I have a limon yellow, which is yellow with some green in it. And I have primary yellow, which is yellow with a little bit of orange in it. Um, my browns, I have uh, inside row here burnt umber and I have still to grain brown and I have a, an orange here that's sort of a reddish orange almost a blood orange called Avignon orange so that's my colors uh, that's my palette I may not use all those colors and uh, probably won't but uh, 
Uh, I want to show you now, get this put on the side and I have myself lined up and uh, all my cameras are recording. I'm going to make a check. Yep. Um, so uh, I have uh, this sketch which you probably are having trouble seeing on here because I, I have taken my uh, kneaded eraser and sort of knock down some of the some of the marks here so they don't uh, interfere with the paint process too much uh, but I don't want to lose all of them because I need to know where these windows are and I need to know the shapes and the uh, angles of them because this has a lot of perspective and it, it goes back uh, a lot of depth in this painting so uh, with that said I'm going to start by putting a little bit of water on the top of this uh, clear water using one of my my big old uh, uh, brush here. Um, oh, I also should remind you that uh, hello Mauro from Italy, nice to have you here with us. Um, if you have any comments or questions there's a, a chat window that you can actually key into and I have this computer up here at my left elbow and uh, I will uh, periodically look over there and try to see if anybody's asking a question or making a comment um, and I will try to answer if I can. Um, so this is the, all the sky, very little sky. Since I, I zoom, zoomed in on this and cropped it a little bit, we have a very minimal sky here. And uh, I'm not going to put much in it. I'm just going to put a, a little bit of uh, ultra blue. And uh, if I can get some ultra blue out here. Uh, these paints uh, reconstitute very easily. These are they're very nice, soft. They have a sticky consistency when they're dry. They really don't dry. They're sort of semi-dry. Um, and uh, they basically uh, get re, uh, reconstituted to a nice painting consistency very easily and very quickly. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of clouds up here and just leave a few things above this little church background here, lighten it up. Uh, and I'm following pretty much what the uh, photograph had, although I'm not uh, putting in uh, a total blue sky. The, the photograph was all blue. I left a couple of couple of uh, clouds in there. Hope you can see that. And uh, that's all I want to do for the sky. Um, for the uh, for this background, I'm going to uh, come in here and take my uh, take some yellow. Um, some of my, um, I want to paint around so that I don't end up painting in areas that uh, I just wet down. But this area here is going to have a sort of yellow undertone right here, all the way down. Um, that yellow has just a little bit of orange in it, but uh, I'm just going to put an underpainting of it here, right th like this. I'm going to paint in some of my light colors and uh, change some of my uh, colors here to get some of this uh, more of this Italian looking uh, color in the uh, in here. Um, that's probably a little bit too dark, but I want to put it here. This is a nice uh, color for the uh, the brick and the block of this building. Um, up here on the top has probably a little more red in it. Um, and I'm doing wet on dry now. Um, and I'm just going to put in um, some of these colors and let them mix and change. And, and uh, let me see, I want to come down to here. And because it's uh, dry I've got some really nice hard edges I can create and I can get some nice color differences in this because uh, basically what's on my brush um, so we're just getting it sort of an underpainting here to start with um, these are the lighter colors um, a little bit of a darker brown here get some of my uh, uh, burnt sienna out and uh, so I'm leaving that area that I painted the sky alone over there and uh, see what I've got here that's about the color I want 
but I'm putting these on in a very light, quick, impressionistic, fast sort of way. Um, okay, pick that up. I'm still using this big bristle brush. I uh, haven't even picked up my uh, flat brushes yet. Uh, okay, that may be a little bit too light, but uh, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, see if I can get some more of this uh, yellowish color here on the uh, face of this building here. Um, I'm going to pick up some of my uh, yellow and put a little bit of <clears throat> ochre in it <clears throat> to get this uh, color that I want for the face of this building. So I'm basically just sort of giving myself uh, some big sweeping colors here and letting them sort of change as they will as the as the color changes I'm just I'm letting it happen whatever happens on here uh, I'm letting it happen and uh, this is a nice light value right as my value map showed me I want this to be nice light because the sun is kind of hitting from this side on the right over here. So uh, we just want to uh, put these colors in, um, add some uh, other colors, mix them up, get some oranges, get some uh, other colors in here. And uh, I want it to have some gradation. I want it to have some uh, change of color. And I want to stay away from the top of this boat over here if I can. There we go. Down like this around the back of that boat. Okay. Okay, so you're probably losing track of what I'm painting here or what it's uh, supposed to be looking like, but um, I have a chimney up there that I'm going to paint in and some other darks. Um, this brush, I can soften those edges. If I don't want hard edges, I can just bring this bristle brush back in and, and really uh, soften them up. Okay, this other side over here, I'm going to start putting a little bit of my uh, violet color in here now and uh, mixing a, uh, a darker a darker color. Some of these same colors, I'm using this, this red and this ochre. Uh, but on the right side here, I'm going to have something with more brown in it. and. Uh, I'm just letting the violet create that. Um, and uh, see if we can get some uh, change of color in here. I want to make sure I leave areas for my, um, for this other building that sort of sticks out with the roof is getting light on it. Um, so a little violet little yellow that's sort of a nice complementary color to uh, the yellow and uh, see here so this background goes fairly quickly um, see it comes over here and then it this area, I want to leave that area light so I can put some sun shining on it. Big sweeps of color here. Um, so just So I'm putting a nice underpainting under this whole thing so far and leaving very, very few whites so far. Um, this gets darker right in here. I'm using this violet to get me, uh, get me a darker, uh, color here. Yes, I'm doing wet on dry at the moment. Um, I just did a little wet on wet at the sky because I wanted to have a nice soft blends up there in that sky. Uh, but I find that I can really get some nice uh, uh, control of the brush basically when you uh, when you do wet on wet or wet on dry. 
Okay, a little color change in there. Value change. Uh, really needs to be darker on this right side. It's going to have to get more dark up the top. Um, so I'm going to pick up my burnt sienna and my uh, ultraviolet. Let's see if I can get uh, a few more darker shapes up here like this. Um, maybe even some darker shapes in here. Uh, as long as I don't have too much water in the brush, it won't blossom. It will sort of blend together uh, if I'm careful. This this uh, bristle brush makes some nice uh, effects. Okay, um, <clears throat> that looks like that's working to suit me. Anybody have any questions? Okay, um, I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush now, and uh, probably this flat, this, uh, I think I'll get my quarter inch flat. Um, have this uh, color of pink reddish, I'm going to use this reddish uh, cadmium red, and uh, see what it looks like back in here. It's about the color. Goes up, goes up in here. Like this. Like this. So this is all just underpainting pretty much. That to be a little darker on this side here. This is a shadow side. Something like that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody still seeing me okay? Um, hopefully we're still broadcasting. Somebody said the video stopped. Um, I hope that's not uh, my fault. Um, hello, Louisa. You're from, you are from South Africa, if I remember. Okay, so there's a little bit of a shadow there. All right, so I've got my lights and my middle middle values here pretty much all in. I want this to be a middle value back here, but I'm going to try to change it a little bit. Uh, I've got a couple buildings back there, and uh, so we'll see what we can do with those. Um, have back here a, uh, a roof that comes down like this. Another building. So there's a lot of architectural stuff going on here and um, and I want that to be I want to make those two buildings a little bit different color. I think I uh, go up here and get a little more of this uh, darker color for this roof up here. Right. 
in here. I want to get a few darker colors in here. Give us some. Looks like there's a uh, slight edge back there. All right. I'll do it for that. Um, you see how I'm going to do this other building here. I think I want to make him this last building in the background here. I don't know what color to make him right now. Let me think about that. I'm not necessarily trying to follow exact colors on the uh, on the photograph, but I am trying to uh, get some differentiation between these buildings so you can tell they are different, definitely different uh, buildings. Room for my little circles here. Um, better than that. So I'm not using a ton of water, pretty much a dry brush. Dry brush is really not dry, but it uh, has less water in it than normal. <laughs> Flat brush could use my uh, round brush, but I'm going to try to make this flat brush work here. All right, so it's a little bit further back. I try to make it a little bit bluer and or more, uh, have a little bit more purple in it. Make sure I leave some room for some ornamentation on top of these. Down here we've got pretty much straight down. All these buildings have a lot of dark at the bottom. Thanks Heather for clearing that up. Uh, I, I use these terms wet on wet or wet on dry or uh, whatever and uh, so much of watercolor painting has to do with how much water is in your paint, how much water is in your brush, how much water is on the paper, or how much, yeah, if you wet your paper like I did for that sky, you end up with a, uh, a wet sky. So just putting uh, water on there doesn't necessarily uh, give you the color that you think you're getting because the, uh, the water dilutes it. And uh, all right, let's see, I'll let that go for now. Um, in the area down here in this water, um, there's a some very dark. Get some dark areas down here. I'm going to get a uh, it's going to be darker than that. These are like little steps that go down and touch the water here. So I'm going to. Going to leave those in place and make some highlights on them and uh, make it come right over here to this building. Okay, there we go. All right, everybody's still with me here. Now, um, I do have another architectural thing sticking up here that uh, it's like a, I don't know if it's a chimney, I think it's a chimney of some sort. Um, see if I can pick it up and put him in here. a dark shadow underneath him right here. So 
something like that. Let it blend together and let it run. It will be a little less conspicuous. Uh, now I'm going to just pick up some of this uh, uh, violet, mix it with a little bit of what I have here, and put in the sort of top of this building back here. Has to be darker than the sky. So I want it to uh, fit back here with some It's going to stand out against this guy. Leave a few white pieces of paper in there to let it uh, look like it belongs there. All right. Um, take a small brush here. I'm going to get my uh, number four round. Said I don't use rounds, but I some of these uh, <clears throat> architectural details you about have to do something with uh, a small brush. I'm typically not a small brush painter, but um, throw in a few little things here that look like there's something standing on top. I'm not trying to paint the whole thing, whatever it is. It's some sort of a steeple looking device and uh, I think it actually has a figurine of some sort up there like a and uh, so I'm just using the neutral tint here and just sort of laying in a shadow side and leaving the uh, other side with clear uh, or clear paper plain paper and uh, Okay, so I think that looks like little, what you call them, but uh, we have something on top of this chimney over here. See if I can make it look right. And uh, darken up the left side just slightly. I'm this little number two uh, round here. Doesn't look much like a chimney at the top there. I'll put some more. All right. Um, there's some sort of a thing on top of it. I don't know if I'm even going to try to address it, but there's a little something there, just a couple of dots to make it stand out against the sky. That's good enough. Um, what do we got here? Okay, I've got another bit of a building that sort of comes back here like this. I'm going to put that in while I got this darker brush or this fine brush. It's basically a shadow, I think, of uh, the building and of this. Uh, and we have a shadow here on. The, me up against this so these architectural things get to be very detailed and uh, that's why I allowed enough time hopefully to uh, be able to do it justice so I don't have to rush through anything if you guys stay with me we'll be okay there's a little roof type thing back here all right. Um, then our this roof coming down over here. I might as well do it while I got this small brush in my hand. a similar roof structure going back here like that and we have some small I think this is a drain pipe maybe of some sort 
coming down. But it also helps define that building very nicely. Mm -hmm. In here we have, if I can find them, my sketch. We've got a couple of windows. There. And we have a couple of windows down below. Slightly bigger. Like that. Um, how we do? There's a window in here. So I'm just using these colors I've got on the palette, these uh, browns and lab and violets and that sort of thing. Yeah, Heather, those might be gargoyles up there. I don't know if they put them on top. I think that's a that's a church or a chapel of some kind. So I don't know if they put gargoyles on the top of churches, but maybe they do. There's a little window there. Okay. Now we have in here, I think I probably left a a white section there that probably doesn't need to be there. Um, I'm going to darken that down because it's not dark enough in there. So I'm going to come back over this area and darken the whole thing here. So you're seeing the shadows falling here that uh, are coming from the building above. Making it darker. And if I end up with too many hard edges in there, I'm going to uh, get my uh, little bristle brush out and uh, come in and uh, should all be about the same color. Uh, this bristle brush, you can take it and just put some clear water in it and no paint and just sort of feather these edges and you end up with some nice uh, soft soft edges all of a sudden they just blend right in love those bristle brushes for that <clears throat> okay um, that building there is close to being done I've got a uh, dark base on it down here that sort of runs into the water this is actually runs this way and connects with the next building and uh, see if I have a another uh, line there that helps define that. Okay. And uh, some sort of a structure there that um, has a little bit of a shadow on it. All right. So I like the looks of that. Um, Go back to this back building. I'm kind of working my way from back to front here, so uh, go back in here and see if I can darken in some of these uh, areas on this back chapel, whatever we want to call it. Um, actually, I should have those on the other side darker, probably. Something like that, less on this side. Take some of that up, put a little water on it, and just sort of feather it out. Um, a bunch of detail here that I don't know if I want to get into, but uh, there's some things that look like this. Like that. There's a big uh, circle in the middle. Must be a... Uh, I guess it's a 
wait till that light in probably at some point here. Fine brushes. All right. And uh, I don't want that to be too specific. I'm going to just blur it with my finger a little bit. Um, get this thing so architecturally rendered it looks convoluted and contrived and so I want to leave some changes in there and that sort of thing. Um, looks like there's another sort of a statuesque thing sitting here in a little window of some sort. Um, so I'm just going to shadow it and put a little uh, mark in there. Um, this big circle here See how well I can do a circle here. Hmm. Change the color, pick up some other colors and stick in there. Let's see if we can make it work. Little bitty things going on all over the place. All right. Mm -hmm. Then we come down here in this area. We've got some some of this pinkish color. I think there's another thing in here that looks like it's sort of a statue or something in there as well. So let's put this in. You see what I'm getting? I'm getting a uh, value there that looks like it's it's hard to tell. Um, that this is not part of the same building. So I'm going to have to come back and restate the, uh, the building on the right here. I'm going to put a little darker edge on that so that you can actually see the, the distinction here. Now might be a good time to do that. I'm not going to put it all the way in, but just enough that you can see that there's a distinction between that and this. Let them run together, let them bleed a little bit. What the heck? Um, we have some interesting shapes down here. Just a big door type thing. All right. so doesn't have to be exact duplicate of what's there. And here I've got a door. Needs to be darker. Pick up more of that uh, neutral tint. Now because I've got a dark door, I don't have to worry about the value of the building beside it. And we have steps coming down here of some sort. So I'll just put in a few things to indicate that. We'll let the sun shine on the rest of it. And uh, put in a little type of thing sitting here. A couple of curves to make sure you see the arch. And then down here. And over here, we've got some other colors that I uh, can pull back. In this building here, we're getting underneath it. It's uh, buildings have uh, looks like they have uh, vertical boards in the ground that basically uh, are used to tie boats up around here. Uh, so I'm just putting in a little extra color. Uh, this. I see this circle here, that big circular thing is sort of standing out to me as too much. I'm going to blend it slightly and tone it down just a little, even the other one about it. Uh, so they look like they've got some weather on them, been worn a little bit. They're not just 
perfectly cut out circles but uh, that'll work for that okay let's see now where's my flat okay here we go um, this the value here is pretty good it's, it's getting a lot of Sun so I'm going to leave it I think that value but I want to put these windows in that are uh, fairly dark and uh, I'm really minimizing my palette here. I'm basically using uh, some of my earth tones. I'm using ochre, uh, burnt sienna. I've used some yellow. I've used some cad red. And I'm using a neutral tint and this vi violet, uh, ultraviolet. Um, so uh, you don't have to have 13 or 14 colors on your palette, but uh, you have to try to. Uh, get them in the same, uh, make them so they uh, work together. And complements always work together. There's a window, one below it that's squared off. Okay. Uh, let those set for a minute and uh, we'll come back and uh, there's some light coloring on this walkway here. There, I like that better. It's not all white. Okay, so that building's pretty well done. I see an area here that needs a little eave of some sort that uh, has to be darkened. Right in here. Mm, Got to make that stand out a little better. There, okay, this window. If we put a shadow at all in these windows, try to put it on the right, upper right uh, corner so because that's the sun. If the sun is coming this way, if there's any kind of an overhang or any sort of an indentation, um, there, there will be a shadow on that upper right corner. So try to do that if you can think about it. When you got this kind of architectural uh, detail, it's, it's hard to remember everything, but uh, I'll try to do it for you and then you can try this yourself and do it better. Okay, so we got a uh, overhang here and a shadow comes down here like this. There's even a shadow underneath the bottom like that over here we got a similar little structure of some sort with a shadow coming down here and at the bottom all right so i'm just left enough there to tell you kind of what that is without having to beat you over the head with it and, and uh, make you there's a uh, a slight uh, color around that window. Um, this up here, I want this to be darker. I think it needs to be a little bit darker, at least in some areas. This area here needs to be restated a little darker. All right, now we're getting some contrast up here. And all right, I'm going to stop and step back and take a look for a minute and see how that's looking. Okay, I think I'm getting the, the depth in there that I want. I'm getting the little gargoyles or whatever they are on top. Um, I see a one area that needs just a little bit, of, a little bit of tone in it here. This chimney, it's hard to tell that's a chimney there because there's nothing on this side to say. Where's the rest of it? There. Just darken that down a little bit and then come back and put just a few more darks on this side. To make it match the uh, other stuff in shadow down here. Okay, now that helps that stand out considerably better. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you notice, but the this angle is not vertical, and this one really is not quite vertical. But 
this is part of that's from the camera that distorts the photograph, but it's also a technique that uh, painters use when they paint something architecturally that they're looking up at. Um, it's called actually vertical perspective. And things do tend to close in like that when you're looking up at them. Uh, whether it's you're looking at them live or you're looking at them on a f photograph. Um, but it is a true uh, thing that uh, photographers recognize and artists that have had some some sort of training or knowledge or workshops or whatever. You may hear somebody talking about uh, vertical perspective. All right, now this area here, we've got some more interesting stuff going on up there. Let me see if I can keep within my same family of colors. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to keep this number two brush going with my burnt sienna and my violet. And we're going to come up here and put in small shadow into there. Come down and put another one in. A little gap. Come down something like that. Um, put down get a little bit of that uh, it's a big uh, window that has its shutters open here that uh, I try to capture. Again, I used a sort of a damp bristle brush to take those lines out. How are we doing on time? Well, we've been 50 minutes and we're probably uh, not more than 30% uh, done here, I want to say. So uh, it's going to take me a good, good bit of time to get this done, primarily because of the, all the architectural stuff that's going on. Um, and I hope you can put up with that. Uh, I'm going to do this work on this area here now. Um, and uh, it's in the shadow, it's the darkest. Um, and uh, so let's see if we can get some, uh, I don't know, this. There's a at the right angle. Okay, that looks like a looks like a window with a shutter open. There's some sort of a thing sticking out here. I'm just going to pop that in. I don't know what the heck it is, but it's there. And uh, leave it at that. Okay, so these. Um, Areas at the top, they have little, like, I guess you you put them in your house. I guess they call them corbels. They're sort of a little thing that sort of holds the, I'm not even sure how to paint them exactly. Something like that it gives a, uh, a little shadow there. This runs up. Okay, then we've got another balcony setting over here. It has a very distinct and sharp angle on it. It comes down like this, but it goes up, 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 off of the... It's 
gonna have a little more depth than that, a little more height, I guess. All right, now it has in it some, uh, it's hard for you to see, but it does have some uh, like wrought iron. All right, so I just scraped out because the paper was the right wetness, the paint was the right wetness. I was able to scrape that paint out of there. Um, it's another nice little trick that you can practice at your leisure. Um, underneath here we have another set of shadows that sort of highlight this balcony to make it look like it's really sticking out from the wall. And we sort of blend these down. Okay. Again, pull it down to make soft edges. And, okay, down. There's, now this is where we get into some of these big windows here. Big windows over here. It's fairly dry. So I think I can do that. Um, there is a, a bit of I spent a lot of time looking at the photograph because I want to get these architectural details right. If I don't get them right, it's not going to look good to you. And uh, there's a little bit of a shadow going on here. And it sort of just fades out into nothingness there. Um, like that. Okay. There we go. Now. Down here in this section, as we're coming, oh, I know I wanted to put in just a few things that look like there's something holding this up. There's some, sort of has some curvature to it, like this, and it has a couple of, just so it looks like there's some uh, depth in that. It's uh, give it some three dimensional. Uh, quality here. I think that'll do it, maybe. Give it a... Okay, stop with that. Now, down here we're going to start with... See, we got this roof going this way. We got some interesting... Uh, more little things going on down here. It's really uh, hard to see. In here we got some things that look like they might be some sort of window or something that's going on up there. Along there at that top edge of that. As we come down here now, we get make sure See, I have another little window. This is where I start getting the perspective. You have to have the correct angle on the top and the bottom of that window to make it look right. So we have, from a perspective standpoint, we have a perspective going this way, and we have a perspective going that way. So if you don't make these angles right and make them sharp so they stand out, it will look distorted. It will look like it's wrong perspective. And as we bring these other uh, windows this way, there's more here. So I'm trying to make this look like it goes that way, trying to make this look like it goes that way. More windows here.
Okay, I think they're looking about right. We have some, uh, I don't know, reddish, orangish type of things over the top here. Another little element that sort of helps reinforce the perspective, like a shadow type of thing. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but uh, okay. Coming over, I want to make sure I don't get out of out of whack here with this edge of the building. There's really no edge here. This one building just sort of runs right into each other, so you can't tell there's a a distinct difference. Um, but you can tell from the way the these windows are going that you're coming up again like this uh, it's going to go down just a little I want these to sort of I could put a line there that they would actually follow that line. Oops, dropped my brush there. Get some uh, reddish ochre. Put in just a slight shadow over these. There could be some things between them I guess that would help. All right, I think that's enough for those windows right now. We have some more windows that come down here. Dark area there. I'm going to put in that dark um, part of the wall here. It actually is darker than I have it. Helps give a distinction between this building back there and the building that's sitting in front of it. There, right. okay. Now this building here has, see the perspective is going this way now for these windows, so it's getting more more specific. If I were to draw a line here, I would have a perspective that's going this way. So any windows I put in there now have to similarly be, uh, um, have the right angles on them. Let's see what I can do here with this little guy like this. Like a big opening. And we have another one here like this. Sort of down small one like that and then uh, I may be missing a couple of these I don't know exactly but uh, is this one point perspective um, yes it really is if this were a railroad track or whatever set of light poles they would all be pointing toward one place in the back yes uh, but that's why all the all the lines, if you to draw all these lines, they should all hopefully focus in on one spot. If they don't, I've got I've goofed up my perspective. Let's see here, I want to get another another window opening of some sort. This actually has a little dome over the top of it. There. I don't know if you're missing that, maybe. Okay. Um, and then uh, coming down here, this boat, we've got a other. Okay, there's some uh, posts that stick up out of the water here by this boat and uh, I'm going to leave those for a little bit later.
All right, we're uh, getting close to, uh, I want to say, maybe half done. I don't know. Um, it may go faster when I start putting the water in all this. I still got a lot of architectural details to put in over here and, and uh, more to, a lot more to put in over here. Um, let's see. Let's <clears throat> see if we can modify a few things. Put in some a little bit different uh, color in these windows now. I'm trying to warm them up a little bit as they come toward us. Putting in some more ochre. A little bit of this uh, cad yellow, cad red, cad red to uh, warm them up a little. And uh, let's see. Let's start in here. We've got down right about here we have a window sort of sets like this And then we've got some that come up here all the way up to the about middle part here, like this. They're going to have a sharper Alright, this is taking a good bit of time, but um, Should have a little more, a little less, something like that. We'll change a color and pull in another one or two here. Make them a little wider as they get closer. Not sure, we'll see more of them. back. All right. Um, let's, I want to put everything in there. It's kind of, I don't want to make this so realistic that it's uh, driving you crazy and me. You can spend hours. I mean, I could spend a couple days on this painting or more if I wanted to uh, put in a lot of detail, a lot more detail. These all should have any kind of a shadow should be on the inside here on this this part of the window. Under the top and down the left side. Put a more shadow in here maybe. Something like that. Take a dry brush. This nylon brush we can work and sort of blend a little so they don't look so strongly painted. Um, over here a similar thing. So just these little fine details sometimes help really tell the story. Uh, you don't have to make perfect windows. Um, if you look at uh, Singer Sargent's work, um, he just, he really obliterated some of the rules that were um, 
in place at the time by just he would just draw very he would just take his brush and just do a swipe like that for a window and when he did canals and paintings in Venice uh, they definitely had a lot of impressionism in them a lot of it a lot of uh, okay that's good enough I think um, here we got this it's all nice and dark. I'm going to have some variation in it though and make it uh, look like it's got something casting a shadow there. All right. Um, the bottom of these windows actually have a little set of flowers or something setting up here in, in some of them. Uh, I'm just going to put them in shadow and kind of leave them there. They look like something's going on and uh, not much to it like that. Uh, good enough. All right. Um, where are we? Okay, I think I'm going to come in and put in some of this, uh, a few more details over these windows now. And um, give you just a little Something that looks like there's a some sort of a, a structure around these windows. Um, they actually have some sort of thing going on in there. I'll value, put a change of value in there. Um, don't have to do too much. Let's just put in a. I think that's good enough. Maybe there's something going on with each of these. Looks like there's a little platform or something over the windows. All right. Um, now, I don't want to forget this. There's a, a uh, another balcony sitting out here. And the question is how to paint it. Um, How to paint the balcony. Um, it has these windows do actually go down further than that. Um, this balcony comes out here like this and it actually overlaps that okay hopefully that's starting to look like a little box sitting out there And if it's a box, we can make it look like uh, a balcony. I don't know if my trick of putting in, using my uh, brush to scrape in some things that look like there's openings in here or not, this may not work. Yeah, it's almost too dry already. Oh well, I'll come back and put some dark over that and we'll make the make them uh, black instead of light. Down here we've got an area that's got to be under this balcony. Make it look like it stands out. A little shadow. See that, how that works? We just feather this bottom edge into the wall make it a soft edge and uh, we've got our, our shadow that we need. Now we've got some uh, arches here, a couple more windows. We're going to have this thing, uh, this part of the 
painting pretty well done here. Let's see, we've got a couple of square windows in here. Let me put in a couple of those little jobs. Like that. Then we have uh, arch here. Change the color. I want to add a little more red to that. Get a little darker, maybe. Here we've got an arch. Straight down. Hope you're all hanging with me there, folks. And um, we've got some more kind of hit that with my brush there. A mistake. I want to make this a little darker around this arch. Now I'm going to show you that arch. And then there's another, I guess it's not really an arch, it's actually a square window on this side of it. Right here. Something like that. I'll go back and darken that up in a second. I'm going to make this a little darker underneath this uh, thing that's holding up the balcony. Put in some dark and just sort of let it run together and it will sort of blend itself out. Or you can use some wet brush and blend it yourself. All right. I think I got the right angle. This needs to be, see these things have to have the right angle on them again or we're going to be distorting our perspective. This thing has to have an angle like this. Like this. All right. So hopefully if I were able to draw some lines here to my one point perspective, that these things would all converge on some point here in the middle. That's the idea with the one point perspective. All right, folks. Um, what else we got to do here? Uh, I think I'm going to put in some... Uh, there's some wood... Uh, posts that sort of stick up out of the water here and uh, these are meant for tying in uh, the uh, boats that kind of come here. There's one that goes up this way. Like that. It's probably couple more down here somewhere. I'll put one like right in here. Overlap that window there. All right, so these are just places where they tie off their boats. Um, what else? Uh, I think I'm going to stop with that for right now. And a couple more shadows maybe here. All right, um, oh, this window here before I leave this right side of my painting and go to the left side. Um, whoops, wrong, don't get that blue in it, don't want that, I wanted this window here is really, really dark, but I'm not going to make it quite that dark, <clears throat> I don't think, unless it comes out that way, then I'll say I meant to do it. Could be darker. Okay. 
there's a few things over the top here that sort of highlight that. There's actually some things around this arch make it stand out a little bit. I'm just going to put in a few, few little hints there. Um, I just got my hand in where I just painted. Not good, but it's at the bottom of the painting, so it's not that terrible. All right, I'm putting really dark stuff in there. Well, folks, I hope I'm going to get this done. Okay, um, so I think that's going to do it for that. I might put a few more details up here. There are some areas that have some, I don't know what they are. They're like little things that just sort of sit in here like this. They might just be architectural decorations or something, but uh, I'm going to put them in and just use my paper towel and just sort of scrub them down like that to give it some texture so I don't have an area up there that's open. That was almost almost two inches without uh, anything going on. Um, and there's a couple more places where we have some... Oh, these... these, these uh, I don't like that. I'm going to use this brush. Um, and these things that look like little posts sticking out. Maybe they're for banners or for flags. I don't know. like the one that was up above there. That's awfully, awfully, uh, let's pull it back like that. Let's see if I can blend that out. I don't really like the way that looks. Um, it's too, too wide. But we'll come back maybe and restate that in a minute. Uh, I didn't have my paint dry enough had too much water in it. There's another little one down here like this. It goes on the side of the wall like that. There, that's what I was trying to get, something like that. This was going to go something like that. All right, stop. Let's go back. Um, I don't know, in fact, maybe I can work on this water and boats while I'm here. I got all this dark stuff going on in my palette. Um, the water is a, a unique color. It's got some green. Eh, I guess it's got some green in it, but uh, I want to... Uh, I'm going to slightly wet this uh, area so that I can get some um, reflections in here. I'll put the reflections in first and then put the boats in last after it's dried. So I just want a little bit of water, a little bit of uh, dampness in here. Clear water. Just putting it right over this whole section. Might as well just paint it while we're here instead of coming back to it. And we'll just go from right to left. Uh, Richard Racing, good to see you here. Thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, thanks for your comments. Uh, another one of my followers that just figured out I was painting during the day and he decided to join me. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I want to put some, I'm going to just take some of this yellow that I've used before and not try to get another green or something in there and try to get a uh, color that I can use for this water. It is really fairly dark, uh, and uh, I'm going to start putting it in here. Um, a lot of running, which is to be expected. i have blown out my boats to keep them from getting overly covered with water. Um, 
pick up some of this other colors get some browns in there maybe some reds I don't know we're getting a lot of reflection that should be coming off of the building back there should be changing these colors a little bit really dark over here wish I'd uh, done this differently but um, you may get to see me make a mistake here or two I don't know um, all right um, so put this water all the way over here in front of this boat around this boat and this boat around this guy there's a lot of dark going up the wall here behind him <laughs> well we'll see how this works um, I'm going to use my paper towel now see if I can scrape out some There's one. I'll make a little one over here. Something like that. Come back and put in a few darker areas over this to make it uh, look like a reflection, more like a reflection. one way to make a uh, reflection um, put a few things like that over it and uh, all of a sudden we're we got her done there pretty much Come down this boat this way too close to that boat there I'll make it darker all right there we go um, just gonna let that rest for a while and uh, may come back and put some water in there and clean it out a little more I don't know okay Richard good idea try to make this a street instead of boats might have to call it something besides Venice but uh, I guess they have streets in Venice um, all right um, I'm going to uh, now see if I can start on these uh, this building on the left here we'll start uh, working on the, uh, the top and uh, when I get my uh, palette in position for you guys watching live and uh, we've got a little bit of a chimney type thing over here that has a shadow on it and um, some really sharp angles here because our center our focal points called the way down here remember so we have to make this angle very very sharp very steep Okay, and let's take a little bit of water and just sort of loosen this edge, pull it down. Make it some dark at the top. Maybe too much. Get my 
another brush out here. My let's pour it down like this. There we go. That's a little better. Just giving a little bit of dampness there. That uh, pulling it down. Okay. Now. That's right, Heather. They do have streets in Venice. They call them canals. <laughs> good point. Well, Richard's a good artist, and he will uh, make something nice out of this, I'm sure. I've seen his work. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can put in some... That's too wet. See, I got, I got that wet in there. All right, well, I got an idea. Let's go over here and work on this other, other side, I'll put on this wall over here. Um, going to pick me up some more uh, this I don't know get our reddish lavender reddish violet color and let's see if we can pull down something here that these windows put another little color over these some nice uh, color variation going on there and basically just using this bristle brush I'm gonna pick up my reddish color now and sort of use almost pure cad red here on this roof And just a little bit of yellow in there to change the color. that come over here and put a little bit of a eve on this okay Make a little bit of a little bit of dirt on there area is got more violet in it and it's a little darker darker value make it darker fun if I'm not talking folks it's because I'm uh, thinking some change of value back here so yeah I need to let that uh, dry up there uh, and as it's getting drier now I can probably start coming back and start putting in some of those windows uh, when I, when I take this bristle brush and pull down, I actually pull the water down with it so it does make it uh, more uh, susceptible to, to running when I come back in there, if I come back too soon, which is what I was trying to do. When I paint like this, I'm already an hour and a half in, so uh, I try to rush sometimes and I shouldn't. Uh, let's see now, let's get these 
these little windows here that have a very steep they need to be vertical but they've got to have this steep angle on them <clears throat> another one over here like this okay back and pick up a few more over here this is a if I come up like this could be just a little bit longer and maybe two three four put another one over here maybe Okay, I think I've got the perspective right on those. Um, put just a little bit of a tone on this thing up here. It's too drastic. And uh, I'm not sure I like that, but uh, I'll leave it like that for now. Okay. Um, See if we can get some more uh, windows below here. There's probably some small ones in here. Something like that. We've got another row in here. We've got another row down here. So. Uh, Let's just see what we can do with that. Take my uh, little number four flat or number four around and see if I can fine tune these a little bit. There's uh, some changes in the building here that actually have a bit of a shadow I think it is here that kind of comes down and uh, it's like a separation of some kind between the buildings but there's it is a shadow of sorts so let's put that in and run it way down here at least down to this level all right uh, what's in here? We've got a big gap, but I got some more windows I need to put in. Let's change the color, get some brown in there, maybe pull up some of this reddish color, a little lavender or violet. Uh, we got a couple over here. Got enough for that one. Down here we're getting So there's that. I'm going to throw in another little vertical uh, thing here. I can keep it straight. Another little balcony down here <clears throat> that 
I want to show you. I'm going to put in another few more windows before I do that. Probably getting tired of seeing me put these windows in, but uh, it all helps tell the story about this. Canal in these buildings. Okay, a little bit larger windows, they're getting closer to us, so we want to uh, make them uh, point that way. Also, the angle's getting shallower. You notice the angle? It's all pointing toward somewhere in here. Okay, um, let me come back and put just a little bit of a color tone on this side right here. And feather it out just a little. It needs to be darker because it's in the shade and I need to show you that. So I'm going to put another light glaze over it and bring it down to here and uh, hopefully that's going to uh, make it dark enough. I have that nice yellow color showing through so when I uh, put this on it actually shows the, because it's all transparent watercolors it shows that yellow underneath that was there. So that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, now that's looking pretty good. Um, how are we doing on time, folks? I got an hour and 40. Well, I usually take a couple hours to do some of these paintings, um, so I don't mind if you don't mind. I'm going to put in this little balcony here that goes like this. this something like that and then it has a whole bunch of stuff underneath it here that holds it up so it comes out like that and then the cross and then there's a whole whole structure here of some kind that holds this thing up I'll pick up some other colors in here and put in this support, whatever it is. Okay, under these windows we got some things going on. We got little things going on above them. If we want to put some uh, shadow in there, I would put it on the right side, top right side of these windows now. All right. And now, well, let's see, we got some more windows down here that have, a couple of them have arches in them. A couple are just um, straight square windows. See if we can get some more of that going here. There's a couple of small, where are those things? They're like right in here. There's a couple of little ones. There's actually three little ones right there. Um, uh, then we have this big arch over here. It runs down all the way down. And then we have some smaller ones back here that are some 
something like that. Okay, good. Um, these windows here we have. Wow, those are not, uh, not the color I wanted. A little bit of this. These things I think are boarded up maybe, but uh, we'll just put them in here. the angles that point toward our focal point. That's not quite the right angle yet. There. All right, now we've got some stuff going on up here that sort of gives us a little bit of a break in the uh, it's actually a, I don't know what you call it, it's a set of bricks, I guess, that kind of come out and uh, kind of come out this way. I'm going to show them like this, I guess. Um, it's not exactly like the uh, photograph, but. Fast brush strokes, pull down, leave some, uh, if you pull down fast, you leave some of that nice rough texture under there, like that, and just uh, shows through very nicely. What's going on here? We got... Uh, reddish color here. It's almost too red, I would say. Lighten it up, get some water in the brush, basically make it more pink. And then I'll uh, we'll just sort of pull some of that down in this yellow as well. And uh, roughen it up a little bit, rough it up, or not roughen up, smooth it out. brush I can just put a little bit of paint on it like that and it just sort of really changes that texture of the whole thing. Um, all right I think we're really closing in on this thing now. Um, there's a couple of little uh, things in here that look like this, like that. <laughs> so, a series of little step downs. This uh, block sort of has step downs in it. Um, we have some, uh, I'm going to put in a few, oh wait, I got a window here. I want to put in another window here. Um, over here there's a window there. Give it a couple of swipes. Something like that. We've got a, something going down here. Like that. There's a big a shadow there. I want to put a nice shadow in there. There's a shadow up here. My big window up the top I haven't put in yet. Up here I have a big window. So let's get that guy in now that that's good and dry. And this one doesn't have to follow our rules of perspective because it's facing us. And uh, there are some shutters kind of hanging onto that thing. So I'm going to put a couple of dark things in here like this. Hanging on there. Okay, let's let that dry for a minute. And uh, we have a little bit of a tree here. I'm not crazy about throwing in another a green color, but uh, we do have a uh, 
bit of a tree going on here in this uh, area there's a uh, put some of this yellow in there and pick up some of the blue a little bit pick up a little of that violet and see if I can get a so bushy tree in here I'm not making it green as much as I'm making it yellow and that in and then we'll come back and put in a few darks in there using this big number 12 brush something like this is going to uh, basically give you an impression that we got some some sort of foliage in here down here that's good enough I'll just block that corner off and I'll come back and maybe touch that up in a minute um, I want to get down here and work on these uh, boats a little bit see if I can find the color to make them stand out there's a boat right in here that kind of there there's some water underneath him but um, couple of boats in here How about that I don't like that that's really giving me a different color in there so I'm just gonna merge it boats a few little things on them here that make them look like there's something going on got an engine or something on the back of it there and got a little thing in the front like that they're duplicates I'm cloning which is not a good thing to do uh, this boat here has got a nice bright red canopy on him here well, this like that pick up some other colors this water down here that's why I said I wish I'd uh, probably put this in And it's got to kind of come up the wall here a little bit, give ourselves some stain. Same with over here. That boat has a uh, motor on the back of it, which I'm trying to uh, kind of draw around. I don't like that. Somebody says, "Yeah, we need a we need a shadow on the uh, on the left." Richard, you're right. Um, 
I'm letting this dry. I've got two big shadows. I want to put a shadow over this building here. I've got a shadow that's got to go over here. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to get these boats in while I was... Uh, didn't want to put them off any longer. Um, here, this guy's got a, got a uh, post sticking up. Here and here. There's a little couple of stakes down here. A couple of stakes down here for boats. In there. This boat over here on the right's got a big blue canopy on him. I don't know. I think I'll make it more violet. Getting close, folks. Getting close. We've been going for two hours, almost two hours here. Mm -hmm. Probably need to let these things dry and do a few more touch-ups to them but um, can't really see that boat that well here just kind of bring it down a little bit all right we do have some shadow that's going to come out from this guy to make him look like he really is sitting in the water <clears throat> out here and sort of tie it together maybe hopefully um, all right um, I could spend a lot more time on this thing but I think you're probably getting tired and bored um, let me put another shadow on the back of this thing here this piece of tie up area Now, I want to uh, put in a couple glazes, get this, uh, <clears throat> something like this. Uh, since I've been using this ultraviolet, I'm going to stick with that for my glaze, but I want to put a nice glaze like this over here, like that. Do a similar thing on this one, this there, like that. It actually covers up even some of the trees down here. Um, I probably could even put just a little bit over here to kind of reinforce this edge. Something like that.
these really darks get some see if I have some more places that I can <clears throat> highlight these shadows um, I think we got some here on the uh, back here I've already got some that look like shadows already but uh, I think this area here needs probably a little bit of a glaze something like that up here probably put just a fraction of the shadow there and then on top <clears throat> maybe a bit of a shadow there um, down here I think I've got that pretty well shadowed in um, but overall I could darken down even more of it <clears throat> if I wanted uh, up here I could come in and put in some more uh, darker color I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin it I better be careful uh, maybe put in a something like that maybe just darken it slightly if you don't go over it too many times you can get by with this but if you go over it multiple times you'll definitely ruin it I'll try to hit it once and get out of there. There we go. Something like that. Make this a little bit darker. Just picking up one light glaze of this color. And I'm even going to put some over the boat here. Tone it down. These things are too too bright, sticking up too bright. Even back here. All right. <clears throat> Let me see. What else can I do? I think that's. I could do more, um, but um, let me see if I can get some of this yellow to show up over here in this tree. I want to have some some of this yellow to show up here in this tree area. It'll help you think there's a tree of some kind sticking out over here. Kind of gets muddy. If you're not careful, you'll get it all muddy. This yellow is uh, a little bit opaque, and uh, so it has uh, that's good enough. Um, I think. I think. Oh, there's a little thing I wanted to do on top of this roof right here. Um, I'm going to use my brush, my, uh, let's see if I can do this. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but um, put it in here like this. I want to put in some things that make this roof look like it has this, uh, these tiles on it. Um, don't want to put them everywhere. I just want to like, you to think there's some tile there. Then I'm going to come in underneath with uh, a dark value here and let you see some more those little something like that which helps tie that together. A little sh more shadow here. Okay, I could probably come back and put another, when that dries, put another little glaze on there, I don't know, to give some more shadow. But uh, I'm thinking that's probably uh, <clears throat> all I want to do with this for now, folks. Uh, I can probably clean that up a little bit. Um, maybe restate this boat a little bit. I don't know, it's uh, not looking the way I want it to, but... Uh, Oh, 
All right. Um, looks like some boats there anyway. This shadow blend in. Time to stop, I think. Put in my little. Get some uh, little drier paint here, maybe. Okay, um, I think that's going to do it for today. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I think I'll leave my uh, other little tutorial on the uh, value plans uh, for another day when we get a little more time. And uh, I think hopefully uh, you like that and uh, hope you can give it a try. My boat on the left looks like it's kind of uh, tipped up on its side and uh, probably need to try to fix that, but I don't know exactly what's going to fix it right now. Maybe this. Uh, Put a little more of this like that will help it, maybe. There we go, something like that. All right, that'll be good enough for now. I may tweak it a little bit after I finish up here, but uh, primarily I want to uh, <clears throat> Thank you all for tuning in and uh, staying with me this long. I've, it's been a long, long painting session, probably one of the longest I've done for one painting, especially watercolor. But I knew this was going to take uh, some time because of the uh, number of objects and the architectural details that uh, you have to put into these paintings. So I hope you like that. I hope you give it a try and uh, check out my website. I'll get this edited and up on. Uh, YouTube again in about three days. I'll have a good high definition version out there. <clears throat> and uh, so I think that's all I want to tell you until I see you again. This is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye. I'll zoom in for you here. Thanks everyone for watching.